Hello, a little special Wednesday video for you. <laughs> Hump day surprise. <laughs> if you caught Sunday's video, you know that we had way too many questions to get through, so we thought we'd post a little extra special video, midweek video for you guys. Hopefully you enjoy. So we are gonna get right into it with our first question. How in depth did you take future weather events into consideration planning slash building your homestead? Oh, I really like that question. Yeah. That's been very top of mind lately with how much we're noticing the weather patterns changing. We had a way colder winter than we've ever had before. And we're currently having a way warmer summer than we've ever had. We're thinking of adding more solar, even though we have a lot. And I know that that seems ridiculous, but we want to plan for redundancies. So powering as much as we can on heat pumps and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, and even just, um, I know we already have one pond for collecting rainwater, but I'm really thinking about putting in a second one so that we can capture as much. Sure, we have a well, but then it uses the electricity to yeah. move that up. And if we're watering the gardens, the runoff, I'd like to try and channel it to that pond just to reuse as much as we can because I've also noticed that we get a lot of rain in one short period and then we're going through long periods without rain as I'm sure many places around the world are right now but I just want to yeah I find we're trying to think of how can we reuse every resource that we're generating are you still planning a greenhouse dome yes yes of course yeah. we are we um, have been really ambitious I think over the past two years of how much time things take mm. and it's all starting to culminate at once so we're really working on taking a break and slowing back down and enjoying the build process yeah so i think we want to just see some of the ongoing projects through first before we start that project any advice to young couples it would be completely wrong of us to say that we had a smooth start to our relationship yeah but we had very good communication skills and we saw something in each other that we wanted to keep exploring and i think that working through that trouble really helps you at different points or it has helped us at different points in our life because as we get frustrated or, I don't know, when things aren't going right, we're able to communicate and work through it and you have those problem solving skills that you've developed through confrontation. Another thing that I would add to that is compromise. If you think that you're going to find somebody that you don't have to give up parts of yourself, like that's not, that's not realistic. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of people nowadays are looking for someone that is a hundred percent like exactly what they're looking for and that's not out there because Tyler already took it <laughs> <laughs> no it's just like it doesn't mean I don't know if this is coming across right and I'm not saying that you like need to settle you should never settle for anything less than like exactly what makes you happy but I just think you need to be a little bit realistic with yeah I think so do you know what I'm trying to say I think it comes back to like what social media projects and yeah. stuff like people are looking for prince charming and all that but like that doesn't exist it's not real it's a made-up thing took him. <laughs> <laughs> what skill are you most proud of learning from your land build that's a good question hmm there's so many plumbing electrical i think just problem solving in general yeah what we're doing is very unique and a lot of our systems that we've built and jerry-rigged are quite unique so reading or listening to people tell you like what typically works in a regular home in a subdivision isn't always the case for us so i love like yeah. trying that and tweaking it and learning from it and fixing it and i feel like we never had that before um i mean i go back to no i agree actually with that like when we first thought or it was more so me i thought i could install rain gutters with two-sided tape you know what they say <laughs> couples that glue their gutters on together stay together like, <laughs> remember that yeah. <laughs> like that's not going to work but I worked through that problem I mean it did work for the summer but I know now that you can't do it so it's problem solving skills <laughs> yeah that's true I think for me it's probably like the confidence that I have now when I'm dealing with contractors or like specialty trades I find it very common that people try to like mansplain things to us not knowing that Todd and I, before we've even called a plumber or an electrician, we've spent probably 30 hours watching YouTube videos of how to do the job ourselves. Reading journals and articles and yeah. everything. Like we, we really, I think that living off grid, you really have to know yeah. 
every single thing about how your homestead works because yeah also when i wanted to quickly clarify the reason too is like where we live you have for certain trades you have to have them do the final work so like electrical and electrician has to do it to get mm -hmm. the permit and stuff so but we need to know how it goes together because of what todd's saying like if some if it goes down well, like, we're not going to call someone to come fix it and drive all the way out here for that. Yeah, we're going to fix it ourselves, yeah. right? We're going to put our overalls on, get our get little done. tool bag, and we're going to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Watching your last video, I said, wow, Todd is so patient. Am I right? Is that always true? Um, <laughs> okay, Todd is, I would say, a little bit more patient than I am, but I don't think either of us are quite patient people. I don't think we're quite patient people, but I think where we differ is I'm more patient when trying to explain something where you get frustrated if if you're trying to explain something to me, you get frustrated. But if I'm trying to explain something to you, I won't get frustrated. But then if things don't go right, I get frustrated where Tyler's yeah. more like, you need to calm down and like... That's a... <laughs> that is so right. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm pretty patient. <laughs> What is your next dream or plans for future? Best regards from Poland. Honestly, I don't really have like more dreams or plans right now. I'm doing everything that I want to be doing. I know that that's probably like a cop out or like a cheesy <laughs> answer, but like I feel like I'm finally exactly like where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. I get that, but I also want to build a tree house at the dome or at the land and I want to try and get a zip line in. I was talking the other day that maybe we could try and put a slip and slide somewhere. I got some dreams, but I agree with Tyler. Like I'm very happy with where I am. I don't have I don't have big ambitions of anything, you know? Just I'm happy. Have you or are you planning on planting any fruit trees? Yes, lots. Lots, lots of fruit trees. So the greenhouse project is not just a greenhouse. That's why we're taking our time with it. It is going to be like a massive food production area that is going to have lots of outdoor gardens for summer production, some fruit trees, berry bushes, all these different things. And then the centerpiece of it is the greenhouse that allows us to produce food all year round. So yeah. it's coming, it's just, we want to do things right and yeah, it takes time. We're not, yeah, we're not in a rush for it, but we are going to be doing blueberries, blackberries, apples, like pears. It, we're doing it all and it's, yeah, it's going to be really exciting. We're, I mean, last year we got our hands um, wet. What's the expression? Dirty. dirty. <laughs> we got our feet wet and our hands dirty. <laughs> With uh, preserving and we just can't wait to continue yeah. to like build those skills It's something we both really really enjoy doing plus we're able to give things away to help friends and family which That's what life's all about. Like, yeah, and I think it's also important to ease ourselves into this Yeah, we this moving to the land and all of this is a huge change to our lives and I think it's okay to learn little bits each year. I, I think it's completely unrealistic two years into this to expect us to be completely off the grocery store and know how to preserve everything. We're learning as we go and making yeah. mistakes and I'm excited. How do you allow each other space if things get tense in such a confined living space? Communication. I think like anything related to our relationship, the answer is always going to be communication. Yeah. There are times where sometimes you don't even need to say it verbally, but I can just tell that Tyler is at a boiling point and I will just give him the dome and go figure out something to do in the yard or... Go pick up groceries, yeah. go for a walk. Like, if you tell someone that, listen, I'm feeling really overwhelmed right now and I just need some alone time, like, what's the worst that can happen? Like, if the person that you're with doesn't respect that you need space, it's probably not the right person for you. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Like it's, uh, yeah. I need some space. <laughs> <laughs> How is your previous garden? Did you get rid of it with planting the new garden? Oh, that 
existing garden is still very, very much thriving. We just wanted to expand the food production as much as we could. Yeah, we're just, we're getting our feet wet with gardening and learning as we go and we're growing as the space allows. And that original garden is starting to really thrive. Yeah. It's its third year and I think it's gonna be our best production year yet. Oh yeah, I think so, so too. The tomatoes in there, like oh, yeah. at every year, it's just they grow bigger and bigger and bigger. We're actually able to grow turnip. I looked at one the other day, like it was peeking through and it looks like it's the size of a softball. So I'm really, exciting. really excited. It's still there, it's thriving and yeah. I think the thing I'm the most excited for is the broccoli. Like the heads of broccoli are like what you'd find in a grocery store. I, I it's just- Or at Fruits by Fruits. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering how you're gonna store all your canned goods, potatoes, etc. So am I. <laughs> 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 no, we do have, <laughs> we have a plan in the works. We're kind of reimagining how the workshop is going to be. And yeah, hopefully things work out and we're able to put like a freezer in there and some shelves to store yeah. things. We're not gonna get a root cellar in. We have a lot of groundwater because we're on a hill the entire property. We have issues with once we go three, four feet down, we start hitting water filling in. So a root cellar may not be a viable option for us, but we're gonna yeah. explore some alternatives. Yeah, I think that it's just, it's unfortunate because a root cellar would have been really cool, but yeah. we have clay soil. There's just so many factors that kind mm -hmm. of limit that. But it's kind of annoying, but yeah. we'll figure something out. Are you still going to start a podcast? <laughs> a podcast is definitely something that we want to do in the future, but the reality is the projects that we have on the go right now take up <laughs> all of our time and then of course editing these videos and it's just, I feel like we're stretched thin. Todd and I are very much of the mindset that we hate wasting people's time. There's so much content in the world right now and I just... I want to add value. I don't want to just do something for the sake of doing it, if that yeah, makes sense. Yeah, it, it totally does. Like, I, I really want to have a podcast and be able to share more, but I don't know. I haven't found out what it is I want to share or how it's going to look. And until we can feel very comfortable and proud of what yeah. we're producing, we'd rather just not do it. We're, we're perfectionists, I, I think. Yeah, and we, yeah, we just take pride in, in yeah. what we're doing. But if you have any ideas of, what you'd like to see or hear, even if they're like more conversational sit down style videos like this, let us know in the comments. What made you decide to live off grid in the woods? Well, there's two factors. One, COVID kind of changed everyone's plans. And two, when we were traveling pre-COVID in the RV, I realized that I didn't like having bills for a place when I wasn't there. By building off grid and having our own water and our own electricity and our own heat source, we don't have to be paying these utilities if we wanna just go away for a little bit because there's so much to see in the world and I wanna see it all. Another question I guess that kinda of ties into this that people always ask is how can you travel now that you have this property? Our place is able to completely just shut down yep. and we can go, but the difference is we have no ongoing monthly expenses when we're not there. Do you think you'll ever get lonely in the future living in the woods by yourself? No, and the reason for that is we do have like a support system around us of friends and family. Nobody is too far of a drive away that it's too inconvenient. Like we'll go to our friend's house, spend mm -hmm. the night sometimes. And we're so connected online nowadays. Like yeah. you can Skype with friends, you can... Surprisingly, yeah. I felt more lonely living in the city. Yeah, me too. Because there's so many like social constructs and we moved to a city after university and it was very hard to make friends as a working adult. Yeah. And yeah, I've, I've never felt as lonely in my life as I did when I lived in a city. Yeah, no, I, I actually totally agree. And not to sound like too hippy dippy <laughs> or like, I don't even know what the right word is, but I feel more connected to what actually matters. Yeah. Like, the moon and like the Well, we weather. know the moon because Squirrel lets us know. Oh yeah. Oh, when oh that's another question. Just a little sub question <laughs> from that. Oh, we're just adding in we're questions. We're adding we? questions in ourselves. So Lily, we still have Lily. She's our cat, but we always just call her Squirrel as like a nickname. Like, you know how sometimes like people will nickname their dogs Bear or like. Well, Charlie has 
Charles, Charl, Buddy, Juju B. He's, He's got, got a so bunch. Many. So yeah, we still have Lily. Why do we get on that? Fluffy McFlopperson's another one for him. Oh, you were oh, probably the gonna moon. explain. And you were probably gonna explain her nickname Squirrel. Yeah. I They're mean, one and the same. So oh, and the moon. Should, like, oh, she gets the zoomies. That's what it zoomies. was. Zoomies. She I don't know where I was going with that though. We'll stick to the questions provided. So my This is why squirrel. we asked you for the questions. <laughs> Can you share some other long-term projects for the land once the house is done? Oh, well, the greenhouse. Yeah. We talked about that. Um, it's kind of like a very lofty, ambitious dream, but I do think it would be really, really cool to have a pool of some sort. Yeah. But that may not end up happening. You've got me on board. You had me at pool. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to have some farm animals. Really? Yeah. I never, so I never ever wanted to. It was something I was actually pretty adamantly against. I've been wanting a horse and a cow for a long time. <laughs> horse and a cow. <laughs> let's, let's dip our toe <laughs> in with the runner ducks that you want. Okay. And Bessie and Helga can wait. Is that a commitment? No. <laughs> it's still an idea, but we'll see. Once the veggies come in, would you do a whole canning video? Absolutely. Absolutely. You can bet your bottom dollar. The sun will come out tomorrow because <laughs> we're in a heat wave. <laughs> no, um, in September, there probably will be more than one canning video, mm -hmm. if I'm being honest. So like our flow of our weeks, oh, are we gonna stick into the question? You're not. No. <laughs> <laughs> so like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we typically um, like create our videos, like whatever we have going on Monday, we Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I edit the videos. And in saying that the canning is going to be a lot, a lot of work. So yeah, it's, if you guys want more than one canning preserving video, We'll be there. Well, the way I view it is we're sharing our learning as we're going yeah. and the canning and preserving is part of this journey. So why wouldn't we share it with you? Yeah, but I don't know how much of interest you guys will find that. So maybe that's something else. Let us know. Is that something you'd want to see? I don't know. Well, one person does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> What is your planning slash creative process when you approach a new project on the land? Whatever Todd wants. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think we often wing it. We have a grand plan of like what we want with mm -hmm. the land. We've shown you that before of like the greenhouse is here, the dome is here, all of that. But in terms of like getting to the nitty gritty details, we just kind of go with like what feels right. If we can find materials that are on sale, that's just sort of the reality of it too sometimes. And there's also just things are changing. What's really cool about the off-grid space in the world right now is technology is moving at what feels like light speed. So things we had planned on doing two years ago when we started this are now actually not the most efficient way of doing things yeah. or our what we know is expanding. So. Like Tyler said, we have a goal, we're headed there, but we don't know the path to it. Have you two settled into a morning slash evening routine or just go with the flow? Routine, never heard of her. Don't know her. It's bad, guys. You... It's chaotic. Chaotic. You like, don't even want to know. We are a mess on the best of days, but we're getting through somehow. Sometimes <laughs> we will literally go to bed at like three o'clock because we'll be working and like, you know, just like wanting to get it done. And then other times we'll go to bed at like nine o'clock. There's I, no in between. Yeah, either. but I, I think that's normal. Not only do we- I don't think so. Well, we live off grid, but we're also entrepreneurs and run our own business. So those True, two yeah. things, like I feel like it's not typical to have a routine in both those worlds and we've merged those, so. Actually, that's a really good way to, of looking at it because the land, like working it and like building this homestead requires so much physical work during the day. But the reality, the daylight. yeah, and daylight. But the reality is, is like, we have a business to run. We have emails to send. We have videos to edit. We have like a lot, a lot of different things. Oh yeah, that we're doing, we're doing good. We're doing okay. Yeah. We're on the right side of the lawn. What? Six feet down or six feet up. Oh yeah, that's true. Two feet in a heartbeat. That's a good one too. <laughs> I got a cooch and a pooch. <laughs> 
I don't know about that one. Do you ever think about your old life, work, friends, etc.? No, not particularly. I really don't. I um I've never really been the type of person that looks back. I actually would say to a fault, I am looking too far ahead. I sometimes I blink and moments are gone. I don't know if that makes sense, but I've, it's something that I've tried to work on lately where I'm more present in my life, but I never waste time looking back, ever. I, I literally never even think of it. I do. There are components of it that I miss. I found my work really rewarding what I used to do. I used to manage a rec center, but the organization I worked for didn't align with my values and that's where the conflict was coming mm. from. But um, yeah, I would say at times I do miss it or think of it. I don't miss it. I just think of it, you know? Mm. Well, if you miss it, we could always build an off-grid pool and, and a I little gym <laughs> and you can manage that. Perfect. <laughs> but I'm going to have a really strict policy. You got to be shirtless when you're in it. <laughs> no shoes, no shirt. Come on in. <laughs> Dream place to visit. Oh, that's a good question. I mean, the world's big, so there's so many places to see. The first place that comes to my mind, weirdly, is... Alaska because it's mm. the only place in the US that we haven't visited like True. we've when we took the RV we haven't done the um, Virgin Isles oh yeah that's true yeah but we've went like literally everywhere we've done Puerto Rico Hawaii and then all of mainland US so Alaska would be really cool to do in an RV I think it'd be amazing but then Australia and New Zealand are really high up on my list. Okay, so I'm on board with New Zealand, but I still maintain that there's too many things in Australia that want to kill me. Yeah, that's so the one downside. I, when I go away, call me old fashioned, but when I go on vacation, I like to know I'm coming home. So <laughs> call me old fashioned. <laughs> what are you binging right now? Well, Todd is not, normally we watch all of our shows together. It's very rare that we don't. But I started Umbrella Academy because so many of you were like, you need to see it. Um, it's a show on Netflix, but I'm obsessed. Yeah, and I don't have anything right now. I'm just watching little like 20 minute documentaries here and there to just like learn. There's nothing, I'm finding there's nothing to catch my interest on TV right now. You need to start listening to like recommendations. Like when people, I was I don't dead like, set that Umbrella Academy was not going to be I good. don't like superhero things. So if They're, someone has like, I like period pieces, I like dramas, I like like murder mysteries. I'm telling like, you, they're going to Watch a true crime with me. You won't watch true crime. I, don't I true love crime. it. They're going to have suggestions for you. I'm my all open because But be receptive and try, give them a try. Oh you're, my God, you, you sound just like you're, I'm supposed to be trying new foods and expanding my, like, what I eat. God. You should. Live on the wild side. <laughs> Is there anything you can't grow where you are and that you'd really like to grow when you have the growing dumb up? Oh, 100%. I want to grow an avocado tree. It's all he talks about. All I want to do is have an avocado tree in there and I want to grow it from a pit from one that we make our like breakfast from. I feel like that'd be really cool. That would be really cool. This is a really cool question. What's your other life scenario? The path that you didn't take, but how your lives would have gone if so. Interesting. So, I know Tyler and I, this is my, can I just answer yeah, what yeah, I think? You go for it. I know Tyler and I, and we're very driven people. And if we had have still continued chasing dreams that weren't ours, that society or whoever had influenced us into chasing, so those corporate jobs and that city life, we would have succeeded at that. We yeah. would have moved up, we would have been happy, and we would have been successful based on other people's standards, but that wasn't for us, and I try not to think about that all that often. Yeah, when I think about that, it feels like wasted time and mm -hmm. I know and it it's not because it got us here it got us here exactly like we spent five years in corporate jobs that we were able to save all of our money and it was a lot of sacrifices obviously but the easy answer I would probably be working at a bank somewhere Tyler was a banker a banker like imagine imagine he used to have to wear suits and ties to work every day but he was so dreamy in a suit and tie with his little briefcase, but... Not the life for me. No. I'll take... This is dreamy. Yeah. yeah, this is, this is the dream for me. 
to each of you, what one thing are you most looking forward to with life after the house is finished? Stability. Hmm. That's good. What's yours? Reliability. Oh. I'm actually just really excited to be able to like turn on a faucet and have like clean running water to flip a light switch. We've said this before, but it's been over two years <laughs> of having that. And right now it's just something that we're so used to, mm -hmm. but like, just, I don't know. We, I, we really took it for granted when we had it. And I know that when we, when we do that, when we flip that switch on. Oh, it's going to be beautiful. Going to be beautiful. And I, and I think I'm going to always be aware that like all the blood, sweat and tears that went into that, it's yeah. just going to feel really special. What will you do for power in the winter when you won't have the sun for the solar panels? Oh, we don't live so far north that there's no sun. That's We're not... actually more southern than the northern states. Like some of them, yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we will be just fine. We did have to size our solar panels adequately so that they could provide enough sun during the winter. But we still get, what, 10, 12 hours of yeah. sun a day? Well, if you look at the solar panels, they're at different angles. So one array is optimized for winter production because the sun sits at a different height. And one is optimized for summer. And either way, we've oversized the panels so that we have electricity through the winter. Doesn't garlic get planted in the fall? Just <laughs> wondering. <laughs> so <Yes>. <laughs> many of you <laughs> reached out and said that we did the garlic wrong. And yeah, 100%, we Hunt, for sure yeah. did. Mess that one up. <laughs> <laughs> But, plot twist, we're gonna see how it shakes out. Yeah. Maybe we'll get really, really big garlic because we planted it early, or maybe it won't work out at all. And yeah. that's okay too. We got all of the plants that we built in that massive garden area, we got them for 50% off. So if things don't work out, we're not that upset about it. We also are looking at our gardening journey as we're recouping money, on growing our own food so if some of that doesn't turn out it's still overall a cost savings it's just sort of lumped into that totally yeah. yeah do you plan to rv again or enjoy the land for several years i could see us maybe someday rving mm -hmm. but right now i just feel like we're so focused and in sync on what we're doing that i can't imagine giving that up to travel like if we if you wanted to go right now and travel. Do you think that you would miss it and you'd want to be home? Yeah. Well, we went away in, in the winter. We booked a seven day trip. And by day three, we had our laptops out and we're ordering material for projects when we got yeah. back. And we're, it's just, it's very hard. This is, this is a passion of ours. We're loving it. It's a dream. And it's like, I just, I want to be here. I want to be experiencing it. And there's nowhere else I want to be right now. Especially the seasons changing. There's something so beautiful about winter and fall. Especially, fall, y'all. Yeah. Like, it's just, yeah, it's exciting. Yeah. If you could relocate to anywhere in the world, where would that be and why? Nowhere. Yeah. I'm happy. Anywhere else that's more desirable or whatever would be way more expensive, would be more populated. Yeah. Like, hello! <laughs> what yeah. are you doing? <laughs> Imagine if someone was like, hello! Yeah. That's it. No that's more it? No more questions? No more questions. You did great, my love. Did I get the job? Um, we got to check references first. Oh, <laughs> close. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us. I don't know if these types of videos are of interest to you guys, but let us know in the comments down below. Personally, I'm liking it because we didn't have to get all hot and sweaty except for the sun sitting on us, but we're down oh. at the river. This is perfect. The sun moved as we were doing this and we're literally melting. So we're going to jump in for a swim, but we'll see you on Sunday. Bye guys. That horse fly bit the out of my nipple. Oh.